reading at home? Not a bunch. I, I stuck some ghosts out in a tree and that was it. Welcome to the Q&A. So we're just talking about Halloween. A little bit different this year. Yeah, it's going to be a lot different this year. Yeah, so if you're on here, when, uh, please put your um, troop number on there so we troop and um, where you're listening from. What area? And then I'd like to know if you guys are dressing up for Halloween and what as, if you are, or your kids. Can I dress up as myself? I think I'll just put an orange shirt on and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> I always seem to try to dress up really creepy. One year I made a big scar down my face and on my neck and I don't know why. Yeah, but that's fun. Yeah. I always wonder if how many black, black cats are going to be out there. Well, I have one in my home, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> I have an orange one. Maybe I'll dress them up. There you go. Dress them as a pumpkin. Yeah. It looks like a pumpkin. He's a big cat. <laughs> well, do we want to go ahead and get started? Because it's about um, three minutes after seven. Well, I see the Taylor's here from Troop 568, and she's not dressing up this year. So that's pretty much going with the flow. Yeah, so we can uh, we can get started. It's a few minutes after 7. And thank you for joining us um, tonight, Votina. Welcome. She's from Pocatello. Um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the Q&A um, for October. And I'm Charmaine Hamilton, the membership manager. And I'm going to turn it over to Rochelle to introduce herself. Yeah, and I'm Rochelle Parsons. I'm the uh, membership coordinator. I handle Blackfoot, Idle Falls, Rexburg, and up to Salmon area. Thank you, Rochelle. So tonight on our agenda, we're going to um, recap from last month. We're going to have um, Jessica Buzanowski. She's going to kill me if I say her name wrong. I'm just kidding. Um, on Troop Philanthropy. And... This is going to be really exciting because I know you guys have asked um, for things regarding money earning and how you can help the community. So we're very excited to have her here. Jessica Burke is going to be talking about the Troop Leader Blueprint that just came out. So we're um, really looking forward to that and showing you how to um, use the tools that we have so that you are um, feeling supported as you go through and do your uh, troop functions. We're also going to talk about um, in-person meeting locations. So we realized that um, right now trying to find places to meet is a challenge. And so we're going to talk about some tips for that and what we're doing as a council to help you out on that. We're going to um, have some imp important operational updates. And so those are kinds of things that will uh, that we have been working on to make your volunteer experience a lot better and just we've been listening to you as far as um, what you need and we will continue to listen and also um, you know let us know what what you're needing what you're hearing out there and how we can support you we'll be talking a little bit about some of the forms that have been coming up um, in customer care we'll do some shout outs tonight some reminders and then you will have time for our questions so last month, the recap um, for last month, we talked about trailblazer troops. And trailblazer troops are an add-on to your um, troop that you already have. So in other words, you can be a member of a trailblazer troop and continue to be a member of your um, regular troop. And a trailblazer troop is pretty much um, a troop that is for 6th to 12th graders. They do a lot of um, outdoor type activities, high adventure, uh, hiking, camping, survival skills. And so it's a really good way to um, get the girls out in the environment and really teach them a lot about skills they'll need in life. And then the other thing um, we discussed last month was the new Girl Scout year and tips and tricks. And so it is not too late to join as a Girl Scout. And so our membership year just started on October 1. And so if you have girls that did not renew or did not rejoin, 
kind of reach out to the families and see where they're at. See if they're wanting to join Girl Scouts, if they have friends that want to join. Um, meet them where they're at, whether they're wanting to meet virtually or in person. And this is a good time to reconnect with your girls. Um, they're going through a lot. And so they will be very interested in getting together with their friends and seeing a familiar face and seeing you. And then um, make sure that, you know, you're checking in with the service unit and um, and get some support there also. And then don't forget, too, that um, in addition to girls renewing, you also want to get any adults that also help you with your trip. Make sure that they are renewed as well so they can continue to help you guys. So I'm going to turn it over to Jessica Bozanowski, and she's going to talk about true philanthropy. That's always a word that I can never really get out. And uh, Betsy is going to join her, so I'll turn it over to them. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charmaine. Those I have two really hard words for you all today. My last name, which is Budjanowski, um, it's so hard to say. And it doesn't, you don't say it like you see it either. So no worries. And I am the director of philanthropy. And we have Betsy with us today, too. And Betsy is our philanthropy specialist. And we are so excited to talk to you a little bit about what's happening in the world of philanthropy and how can we be um, a resource to you. So over the last couple of months, we have been getting lots of questions and we hear you. And as we started shifting through all the different documents to understand, okay, what is money earning? What is fundraising? How do we do a troop pass through? What are matching funds? What are all of these things? And you know what? I'll be honest with everybody. We had a hard time finding all of the roadmap. And so we thought, gosh, if we're having a hard time, I bet our leaders are too. So let's help them out a little bit. So we spent the last couple of months really mapping out um, the questions that you had for us, um, where we are going, and um, some new things too. Um, to help us move forward. So um, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to talk a little bit about some definitions. Now, we have a lot of information on here, um, but don't worry. You will have access to all of this. We'll drop in some links for you in the chat a little bit later on. Um, but And we are always here for questions, too. So don't feel like you have to scribble down everything we're talking about. But we wanted to start with a couple of definitions just to kind of level set where we are and what we're all talking about. So first of all, money earning, and I know you can read this all, but it's um, defined as activities organized by our troop or an individual Girl Scout, um, not by the Girl Scout Council, um, which earn money for the troop or individual and are planned and carried out by girls in partnership with adults. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes about adults who can, act, you know, who can ask for money and all those things. We'll get to that in a second. Um, fundraising, what does that mean? It's activities organized by a group of adults to assist a group um, or a troop with raising funds. So when we say fundraising, it is a group of adults when we're talking together. And then worthy cause. This is an important one to keep in mind because we're going to talk about troop proceeds um, and how you can donate them um, to a worthy cause. Um, so it's defined um, a cause that merits attention, aid, or action due to inherent goodness of values or intention. Now, the cause must be a nonprofit, so it should be that 501c3 status. All right, let's talk about, let's get into some of the good stuff. So Betsy, our philanthropy specialist, and I'm going to tell you all, she's the pro and the researcher and has been um, the woman of the hour to put all this great things together. So um, Betsy's going to tell us a little bit about true money earning and what does that mean? Yeah, um, so money earning You've probably done a money earning project if you've been in Girl Scouts for a while, but we're just gonna go over the basics. Um, so first you have to have an activity, you have to have an idea of what you're raising money for. Um, so are you going on a trip? Like, are you going to the zoo? Are you going on a special 
uh, destination? Um, or are you raising money for a service or a take action project? These are all things that uh, you can earn money for. Um, and so once you have that in mind and you know what you're going to do to raise that money, um, you're going to want to complete this application for a troop money earning project. And you're going to turn that into the service unit manager 30 days before you do your money earning activity. Um, and so, and the service unit manager will take it to customer care. They'll approve it. And once that's approved, you're good to go. Um, and yep, that's it. Just remember that you have to have, um, you have to be involved in cookies or the, the fall product program to qualify um, to do a money earning project. So what is a money earning project? It's a lot of things. You can do anything. Um, some people do uh, like you create a dinner, you have a pancake breakfast and uh, people will buy their meal and uh, that the girls make and those proceeds will go into your account. Do can be a taco bar, a baked potato bar. I want one of those. Um, so that's food. It can be um, collections. You know, uh, people give money for, uh, you know, ink cartridges. So go around in your neighborhood, collect all of those ink cartridges that people don't know what to do with, turn them in and you get that money and that goes into your troop account. Pretty cool. You can do Christmas retreat. Uh, so a bunch of stuff like that. Next. Or uh, you have services, which is what people normally think of. This is your garage sale, your babysitting, uh, raking leaves. Leaves are falling now, so uh, it's a good time to do that. Uh, <laughs> or shoveling snow. Um, just remember, girls can't use power tools um, when doing Girl Scout activities. So, like, no electric lawnmowers, which is weird, but it's what we have to do. <laughs> um, or you can put on uh, like a talent show or badge workshop and that admit the price of admission goes into your account or ha yeah, and have your garage sale. Um, so it's basically anything you can put your mind to. Um, the one thing that we just, you're not allowed to do is endorse other, um, you know, commercial product products. Uh, so no Tupperware sales, no Sensi. Um, it, Fred Robin is having a give back night and says 15% will go to you. You can't do that because that's seen as Girl Scouts endorsing that restaurant. So that's what you can't do, unfortunately. All right. And so this is the form that you're going to want to fill out um, 30 days before you have your activity um, to your service unit manager. Um, I'm dropping that in the comments right now so you can have it for you. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like. Money earning. Awesome. Oh, so let's talk about troop fundraising now. And again, don't worry about all of these things that, you know, lots of information. We'll have it all in one place for you. So you're going to get links here in just a few minutes. Um, remember troop fundraising. It's really focused on adult members. Girls cannot ask for funds. However, if it is a Girl Scout senior or ambassador working towards their gold award project, they may fundraise. Um, and it has to be for the purpose relating to Girl Scouting. So um, just remember that as you're going through. Um, we are asking that you request approval from the council before soliciting funds from businesses because we want to make sure, as you know, we hold special events. We have different corporate sponsors. Um, we have community partners that we're already working with. And so we want to collaborate with you and really look at that opportunity of, gosh, oh, we already know them. Let's help you get in there. Or, um, you know, we've already made an ask of them or let's coordinate our asks to make sure that we are doing what's best for the organization and for the Girl Scout as well. So um, what we're asking for you to do is before you solicit, you submit the list of businesses that you'll be soliciting to the philanthropy department. And so um, we ask that, or excuse me, you're going to send it to customer care and it's then going to come to us. 
Um, and we are asking that you do that two weeks before you solicit. Um, so that way we can make sure to have time to go through it. We also have a form, or excuse me, not a form. Well, yes, there is a form that you are gonna fill out here. But we also have a list of community partners that we already work with. So you can look at that. Now this is, um, you might ask, well, gosh, I'm just asking them to donate an actual item, like an in-kind item. I'm asking them to donate, um, I'm trying to think of something, but, but you know, like a, a piece of art um, that we're gonna use for some sort of fundraising event. So, well, we may be working with that company already um, with that. So we just wanna make sure that we are um, collaborating together and honoring um, what we know about our corporations and companies already. Um, and we wanna support you guys, you all, excuse me, to be the most successful. Um, so we have that corporate donors list. So a couple of key points to look at here um, on the next slide, please. I wanna talk about a few things that are really important when we're talking to different companies. So donations must be processed through the council so the donor can receive a tax receipt. So any donation, it is required by law that any donation, um, $250 or more, has to be receipted. So we have to know that information. So that's that um, form that we want you to fill out for us. Um, also, when you're, and, and that can be in kind or it can be, um, find, uh, you know, cash, like that hard cash as well. So a couple of things to think about. So say um, there are often, this, this is, comes into play with matching gifts too. So say somebody wants to donate cash, $250 to your troop, but to do that, it needs to come through the council and then we will pass that through to your troop so you will have those funds, but that allows us to provide a receipt to them for tax benefits, okay? And so um, we have to be able to track that. And then that way, you know, we were joking later, Mama Jess, say Mama Jess wants to donate $250, um, but she wants those tax benefits. I would then send it in to council. They would pass it through to my troop, but then council will send that receipt to them. Well, what I could then do, say I work at Micron, I could say, oh, I know Micron matches gifts. And so I'm gonna take this receipt to them and show them that I did this. And then that way they can match and double that donation or whatnot. So those receipts are super important to help with matching gifts. But they also could be, um, for example, for in-kind items. So say somebody, um, one of your troop dads wants to, or moms, doesn't matter, wants to um, purchase uh, Halloween candy and um, decorations for their Halloween party. Or um, say you're going to go camping and they purchase um, some food and um, the campsite. So those things, he, they, you know, Mama Jess is just saying, I'm going to do these because um, it makes me feel good. But I have a company, you know, I just am doing it in kind. So I paid for those things. You guys didn't have to pay for it. I paid for it out of my own money. So I wrote a check to Walmart or I wrote a check to um, the Forest Service for the campground, right? Well, we need those receipts sent in to council so if my company wanted to match that, so say Micron wanted to match my gift, council needs to show that we received those receipts. I hope this makes sense to everybody for in-kind donations because in-kind donations can still be matched from another company, um, from the business, but the receiving has to be done through um, the council. So I hope this is new. We're implementing a form that you need to turn in. Um, so say that in-kind donations, Mama Jess, I paid for the campsite, right? If that um, receipt is not turned in within 30 days to customer care to come to council, we will not be able to receive that. So we need you to send that within 30 days. So don't wait till the end of the year to turn in all of your receipts. It needs to be within 
30 days. Um, so that way you can see it, know how to fill it out. Of course, um, customer care can help answer this, but we can too. Um, all right, let's, um, and this is a copy of the list of sponsors and in-kind donations. These are people that have um, already worked with us. Um, so I see some information, Mariah, we're going to, we're going to get back to you on that one. I see that note there. So we'll hang tight and we'll get back to you. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Betsy, do you want to talk a little bit about what, what are small grants? Sure. Uh, so sometimes you can get grants, um, which are exciting, uh, <laughs> to, to fund some service projects. Now, um, with small grants, uh, we're, th we're talking, you know, ones that are easy to fill out and um, easy to get. Uh, we're not talking like those huge, you know, grants that our, our wonderful um, grants manager, uh, Allie, does for us, for council. <laughs> um, so littler ones. Um, girls cannot do uh, apply for small grants um, unless they are a senior or an ambassador um, working on their gold award project. And adults can um, can apply for small grants um, in in some certain circumstances too. So what you're going to want to do if you have a grant, say you're a gold award, uh, you're working on your gold award project. Um, so that grant will need to be in your gold award proposal form. Uh, so that means you know it's happening and it's documented, and and we can know the process and help you through the process um, when you go through it. Um, if you find a grant after your proposal, then you're like, oh, this is just perfect. Then just reach out to us and, and we'll, we'll talk you through it. And, um, it has to be 30 days before, um, the grant's deadline. So, so we can help you through it and make sure that, um, it's not the same, uh, grant that we're applying for. Cause sometimes, um, they can only take one, um, one ask per year. And, uh, if we've already taken that, we don't want you to waste your time filling that out if we've already done it. Um, so it's, it's really to help. Um, and any of this grant money has to come through council because, um, it's required to go through a nonprofit through a 501c3, which is, um, council. Um, and then if you, if you get a grant, um, then the girl will have to fill out all the paperwork and, um, reports and, and submit everything. Um, and give that copy to uh, to council, so just we can have records and we know what happened. So when we talk to a funder again, we we know what happened. Um, and then we're here to help you through this process every step of the way. So if you have questions, if you want help like doing it, just just reach out to us because we we really are here to help. That's small grants. Awesome. Well, we're going to kind of fly through some of these others and keep it moving because we know we've got some other great stuff that Jess Burke's going to share about. Um, but let's talk about product proceeds. So um, this is new, 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 new. Um, there has been multiple information about what do you do with cookie proceeds? Um, I think in the past we've talked about, well, you have those proceeds and if you want to do something for another organization, um, you can't necessarily give them the cash, but you could buy them. For example, you wanted to um, provide dog beds at the Humane Society. So you could give them a pro like a product, an actual item, but you couldn't give those funds. However, um, the Silver Sage Council realized that there are times that sometimes giving funds is the biggest impact that we can have. So this is new. Your cookie proceeds or product proceeds, so your fall product, um, may be used um, and may be donated to a worthy cause. Remember, we talked about worthy cause earlier, so that's a 501c3, but it needs to be part of a take action project. So really looking at um, you know, what is this sustainable project, that learning experience? The point is, we don't want to just say, oh, here's all our money. We don't know why we're giving it to you. We want the, remember, it's all girl led. So we want the girls to really understand 
why we're giving that funds away. What does it mean? What impact will it have? And so as we've seen, you know, I think hurricanes are a great example right now, as many of our sisters have been going through, um, you know, uh, hurricanes and emergencies lately. And sometimes I, I like to use the example of maybe like the Red Cross, where they may not need us to send an actual item, but having those funds um, allows them to make, you know, immediate impacts and purchase the things that they need immediately to um, support them at that time. However, what we want to do is make sure that the girl understands, like, what is the Red Cross? Like, what does it mean? What is hurricane relief? What does that include? And so it might look like having um, an opportunity to meet with the Red Cross locally, understand what giving blood is all about, understand what are the immediate needs in a hurricane, like what are things that they might need or do. And so it's having those conversations. It's about learning about a hurricane. So it's that learning experience. And sometimes, you know, we are going to, or I shouldn't say sometimes, we are going to ask that you must first supply. So you can't just automatically be like, oh, here's my money. You know, um, we don't want it to be a, a simple transaction. We want it to be that experience and really understand what philanthropy is about. So troops must first supply using the philanthropic uses of product proceeds form. Whew, that's a big name. Um, and it has to be approved by council um, before a financial donation can be made. Um, so you're going to walk through that form. And I think um, that process is really looking at it has to be submitted to your service unit manager. Then the manager is going to send it to customer care. Um, and then we will work with you to say, okay, this, this could work. Yep, it may seem right to just make that financial donation or here's some ideas of how you can incorporate that learning process with it as well. Next slide. Whew, that's a lot of information I know. So here again is um, the, uh, the snapshot of the form. I see in the chat, we've dropped in where that is so you can get that form. Um, again, the philanthropy team, we are about working with you all. We want to be a support to you. We can't wait to work with you. And so um, we want to help you be successful in all of these different areas. So we're here for you. Betsy is your go-to gal if you have questions and we'll help you walk through all of these forms and so forth. Um, so I think, Betsy, you were going to wrap up with a few of these quick things, um, quick notes. Yep, just remember, uh, we don't want to uh, endorse any uh, commercial products. Um, please don't fundraise for other organizations. You can do that with your cookie proceeds, as you just heard Jessica say, but um, don't actually go out like asking for money for the Humane Society as a Girl Scout. Um, no political fundraisers. Girl Scouts is apolitical, so we can't endorse any candidates. Um, please be respectful when you're collaborating with religious organizations and just, you know, have fun. If you have questions, just ask us. So where is all of this information, right? Well, here is the link right there. We're going to drop it into the, um, into the chat as well. So you have that, um, you all, we're trying to make this as simple as possible of here are the steps to do it. And again, we are here for you. Um, I know that we had that question earlier about matching gifts. Who are all the companies that do matching gifts? That's a really great question. We're still working on that too. What I would suggest is um, asking first, starting with your troop. You know, if parents are making a donation, ask them, does your, does your company, does your employer match? That's the best first way to find out who those are. So, um, and if there are any questions, here's our contact information. Um, and I think we're going to wait till the end of the night to, to answer the rest of questions. Is that correct, Jess Burke or Charmaine? Yes, that is, uh, that is correct. And uh, you, you guys did great. Thank you so much, Betsy and Jess. That was a lot of information and a great job because a lot of research on that. Um, I just wanted to continue welcoming. I see Mariah's here. Hi, Randy. I haven't seen you in a while. I, I, I saw you last month, so I was joking. Um, Cookie's here. Good to see you. Rosa's here. 
And we will continue um, to answer questions uh, towards the end and also put um, comments or questions or anything that you have in the um, comment section or in the chat. So um, I wanted to welcome Jessica Burke. Uh, Jessica is our Director of Mission Delivery. She can tell you a little bit more about herself. And she's going to talk to us about Troop Leader Blueprint, which is going to be so important. And we're so thrilled that we have this resource for you. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to echo what Charmaine said as far as in just a thank you to Betsy and Jessica, because that I know took literally months of research and um, and coordination and organization. So just huge thanks to them for streamlining those processes and getting that information out to everyone. Um, so as far as for um, Troop Leader Blueprint, I'm so excited to be here tonight with you guys sharing a little bit about this new resource that we just launched. Um, for those who are here, I would be curious to know if anyone has been on the Troop Leader Blueprint, um, if you've been on it, if you've seen a part of it that really helped you or resources that resource that you've been really delighted at, about on the Troop Leader Blueprint, put something in the comment box because we'd love some feedback too on what's working for you um, with this resource that we just rolled out. Um, all right, and so Troop Leader Blueprint, if this is new to you, um, the whole idea behind this is we know this year has been one of the most unpredictable and challenging years on the books. And our hope is that this troop leader blueprint will help make at least one thing a little bit simpler for troop leaders this year. Um, so you can, as you can see in the slide in front of you, the troop leader blueprint, the intent is it for it to be this one-stop shop for everything you may need and want for running this your troop this year. Um, so instead of having to scroll through VTK to try and find meeting plans that may or may not work in a virtual environment, um, we've actually have a curated list of suggested badges that we know um, will work in a virtual environment or in an in-person safe environment um, as well. Um, and so these have been vetted, they have been tried, they have been tested, and they work. Um, we have these curated for you on this web page. Um, we also have information about resuming in-person meetings safely and links and ways to find all the information you may need about how to do that. Um, we have links to training and professional development that can help you build out your skill set, whether it's op how to operate Zoom or what to do to organize a virtual meeting. Um, and we also have some information about um, how to request a Zoom license as well, which is something that we're so excited to be able to offer um, to troop leaders and service unit um, volunteers at a discounted rate as well. So there's a ton of great information on the Troop Leader Blueprint. And what I'm excited to do is not just talk about it, but also show you some of that. So I think we're going to bring up the website at this time um, to show you what that is and where to find it. I think we're also, if we haven't yet, we soon will be putting in the chat as well um, as far as how or the comment, um, uh, the direct link to this web page as well so you can find it. But all right. so where you find this web page. So the Troop Leader Blueprint, where do you find it? This is our homepage here, Girl Scouts of Silver Sage. Um, if you click to the volunteer tab on our website, and then if you go over to the menu on the left-hand side, and then go all the way to the bottom, that's gonna take you to the Troop Leader Blueprint. And so on this page, you're gonna find that there are specific resources and badge suggestions for each grade level and even for the multi-level troops. Um, which when we're talking about doing Girl Scouts in a virtual environment, um, especially at that multi-level, there are so many nuances um, and just um, things that can make that extra complicated. And so there's some, it's really wonderful that we have um, the multi-level troop um, resources as well um, for that specific audience. And before we go into those grade levels, I also want to um, call your attention to some of the resources here on this main landing page for the Troop Leader Blueprint. So if you scroll down, you'll see there's the local support and training. So there's a few things I wanna call your attention to here. Um, first of all, if you are interested in a Zoom license to use with your troop or service unit, um, that's something that you can get for the discounted rate of $40 a year. Um, and that is the link to where you can actually um, request that and purchase that is right here. So if you click on that, that's gonna take you to where you can fill out that registration form um, for that Zoom license. Also on here is our, um, is some great training resources. So we have GS Learn, which is our virtual training environment. And if you haven't heard of this yet, that's okay. We're still rolling this out on uh, a more um, comprehensive scale. Um, 
But what we do have in there is two, two trainings that I think are particularly of interest right now. So first of all, there's facilitating great virtual meetings. So it's a training module you can do to learn all about facilitating virtual meetings and some of the best practices associated with that. Also, there's um, Zoom meetings for troop leaders, which is basically your Zoom 101, everything you need to know about Zoom um, and getting started with that virtual platform. If you are not in GS Learn, and this is something that might be interesting to you, please do reach out to us at Customer Care, and you can see that information provided here. Um, and let us know, because we'll get you loaded in there, we'll get you started, um, and there's some great resources um, for you to discover. Next, I want to show you um, the drop down here, meeting planning tools. And so in here, a ton of great information. Um, this planning the troop here in an uncertain world, that's a webcast that I actually watched last night. Um, it was done a while ago, but they have the recordings that you can still see and watch at this time. Um, it had a ton of great, just really practical um, resources available. For example, in looking at a virtual troop meeting, um, it gave breakdowns for each age level and how much time you might expect to spend on Zoom um, successfully with that group. Because obviously a DAISY is gonna be very different than what a, a cadet or an ambassador might be in this. This gave some great ideas for breaking that down. The other resource I wanna call your attention to is this how to plan great virtual meetings. Um, and so here, one of the things that I love is it breaks it down as far as what a sample virtual meeting might look like for a DAISY. And so this gives you um, a great place to start as far as how much time you might want to spend on each of these activities that's appropriate for that specific age level. Also under um, conducting a virtual meeting, this gives you some basic kind of tips and tricks and best practices. Um, and also gives you some ideas about supplies for virtual meetings, because we know the logistics um, for virtual meetings are different. You can't show up to your troop meeting with all the supplies with you for the girls. That's something that has to be coordinated at each family. Um, and so there's some great ideas here as far as for how you can um, successfully plan out supplies for those meetings. So next up, our next drop down is planning activities. And there's one thing in here I want to um, make sure you guys know is available and that's the adapting badges and journeys. So if you're doing a virtual meeting, um, this gives you some ideas of ways that you can still have those quintessential Girl Scout experiences just in a different way. So for example, if you were planning a trip to the Discovery Center with your girls and you're no longer able to do that for various reasons, um, if you go under trips, it can give you some ideas of what are some ways that you could still take a trip, maybe through a virtual tour or even virtual reality, um, through like Google um, Glasses and things like that. There's some good ideas here as far as how you can still have those experiences just adapted to a virtual environment. All right, so this next drop down I think might actually be the most important and that's connecting with families. So. This year, as we know, it is one of the most challenging years and there's no way as much as um, we might try that we can do it ourselves. Um, we really need to now more than ever build out that, that support squad, if you will, for your troop, um, really enlist those families to help um, and make sure that we can continue this Girl Scout experience. And so there's some great webcasts and blogs um, listed here as far as giving some real tangible um, tips and ways to approach that with your families. Um, so that it doesn't, the Girl Scout experience isn't a, um, a weight only on the troop leader's shoulders um, and something that um, everyone can, can really help continue. Lastly, here on this main page is COVID-19 um, guidelines. And so this is for those troops who are ready to return to in-person meetings. Um, we have COVID-19 guidelines that are there to help support you to do that in a safe way. Um, we do update these regularly on the 15th of every month. Um, and so this is some, this links to the page where you can find that most up-to-date guidance relating to everything from um, meeting spaces and sizes to transportation to um, um, even like food and snacks and things like that. So everything you may need is there to help you in um, planning um, those new, those, um, those in-person meetings and returning to them safely. So obviously there's even more there than what I spoke to, but those I think are the resources that um, I think are, are the things that you might want to know about most. Um, lastly, I wanna take you to the what we have here for each grade level. Um, so I'm gonna go into daisies here, um, just to give you a sense of what that looks like too. Um, so again, each of the badges that are listed here are ones that have been done in a virtual environment or an in-person safe environment in the time of COVID. So they're things that we know will work in these environments. 
Um, so as far as if you're looking for where to start, this is a great place to do that. Um, and the place that I recommend you bookmark the page again and, um, and you go here. So under, for example, let's say if you're a Daisy Troop Leader and you're thinking about doing the Good Neighbor Badge, some of the things that you're going to find in here um, are, for example, video demonstrations. So you can actually see some of those activities in, in play, in practice, and see what that might look like. Um, if you wanted to have a special guest as part of your, um, of your Good Neighbor Badge, you could use this link that's here. Um, there's recommendations for how to engage daisies. And then this is, I think, my favorite thing is suggested virtual meeting plans. So if you click on this, it's actually going to map out for you each of those meetings, um, what they'll look like, what the agenda looks like, what you're going to do in each of those so that by the end of that meeting series, you will have achieved that badge. Um, so it takes all the guesswork out of it for you as far as really mapping out what that, um, what that experience can be to, in order to achieve that badge with your girls. And again, this is for each of the age levels um, and there's multiple badges for each. And um, if you scroll down to the bottom, it also gives you a preview of what, what's coming. So we're gonna have another launch of more badges in November, 2020, and then also in February, 2021. And these are all the different areas that are gonna be coming out in those. So what's here is, is just the start, more to come. And hopefully again, um, something that helps to make this um, this year just a little bit easier, a little bit simpler, um, and frankly gives you that place to start. Because I know it can be so overwhelming trying to figure out what to do this year and how to do it. Um, hopefully this helps to take, take a little bit of the guesswork out of it for you. Thanks, Jess. All right. That yeah. was awesome. You're welcome. Thank you so much. That was a lot of information and I'm so excited to hear um, how you guys like the blueprint. And I, I see Mariah has checked it out a bit today. So thank you, that's awesome. I wish I had it when I was a leader. <laughs> it would have been awesome. Would have made it a lot easier, that's for sure. Absolutely, as far as, yeah, it's just that place, that place to start, hopefully take a little bit of the, sometimes I feel like you know, now there's almost information overload. There's so many things you can do. It's hard to choose which one to do. And you can kind of get stuck in this phase, which hopefully this, this helps a little bit with that. Well, it looks like, I guess if we don't have any questions um, immediately in the chat, I'll still be on for a while and can help answer them as they, as they come in. Um, we do have one, Jess. Is the blueprint okay. going to replace the VTK? Good question. It is not going to replace the VTK. What the blueprint does is actually direct you to the VTK um, for more information. So this blueprint, you could think of it as like your landing page and then VTK is where you can go to get even more information. Um, so VTK is still gonna hold um, the majority of the meeting plans and information you may need, but Troop Leader Blueprint is kind of pulling out the things most relevant to the time right now. Um, and then you can always dig deeper through BTK. Thanks, Jess. And also, you um, it would be really beneficial if you guys um, pass some of this information on to your service units and also to some of your newer troops that might be starting. They might not be able to figure out where to dig to get all the information they need. So that would be a great sharing opportunity. Jess, uh, are you doing troop meeting places or am I taking that? I'll jump right in. Um, all right, so another thing that we wanted to speak to tonight on the Q&A is in-person meeting location. So we know as far as that uh, many, some of our troops are meeting virtually um, and many of our troops are also meeting in person and want to continue to meet in person. And we've had a beautiful summer and a beautiful fall and been able to do that outside. However, the weather is turning and it's getting colder um, and folks are looking for places to meet indoors. And um, and kind of across our, our council, um, folks are struggling with finding those places to meet because the places you may have traditionally met like schools or churches or other places are no longer able to accommodate outside guests um, because of COVID-19. So we have a few calls to action um, related to in-person meeting places. Um, first of all, if you know of a meeting location um, where troops are able to meet, 
please share that information with us as well as with your service unit so that we can provide that information to other troops who may be in your area who maybe haven't found a place to meet. Um, the best way to share that with us is through customer care. Um, and if you don't know who your service unit team is, we can also um, provide that information for you as well to reach out them to. So first call to action, if you know of a place in your area where troops can meet, please share that with us so we can share that with others. Um, second call to action is if you are struggling to find a place to meet, please let us know. Um, we want to be able to see where are those communities that need the most support in finding meeting locations and help to make those connections with community partners um, or others who may be able to accommodate troop meetings. We're happy to help um, make those asks to make those connections. And the best way for us to be able to do that is to know where those places are where you need that support. Um, and so the best way to provide that information to us is we actually have a form that we would love for you to fill out that gives us information like where, where would you like to meet, how many people. Um, and when I say where would you like to meet is in like what kind of general geographic area um, and that type of thing so that we can work with you to figure out who we might be able to reach out to in that area um, to try and establish a place for in-person meetings. And I think we're gonna stick that link to that form in the comment um, section as well. Um, so look for that there. We are also working on um, getting out of communication to all of our troop leaders um, through text message and email. I think both. Um, we're still working the final details out on that, um, but we're gonna be sending that out um, within the next week. Um, so keep your eyes out for that as well. And your third call to action is um, asking other troop leaders that who you may be talking to who are going, oh my gosh, I just can't find a place to meet. What am I gonna do? Um, please let them know that we're here to help um, and ask them to fill out the form as well, or even just reach out to us through customer care, um, but to help us know who are those troops in need um, so we can work together um, to make sure the Girl Scout experience can, can continue. And I think that's all I wanted to say about troop meeting places. Um, is there anything Rochelle or Charmaine you guys wanted to say on that before we move to our um, operational updates? Other than just check with your service unit manager as well. They might have some locations that may be available to you as well. Exactly. Absolutely. And the everyone, the folks in your community are the ones who are going to have the, the best ideas as well. So I, I love that. Thank you, Rochelle. Um, all right, so we have a couple operational updates um, for you guys as well. Um, so we, one of the things that we're excited to announce, and this is this is brand new news of today. Um, so you guys are some of the first to hear it. Um, but based on feedback from you, our members, um, we are going to be um, adjusting our retail brick and mortar shop hours in order to be available during times that are more accessible to our volunteers. Um, during COVID, we've had um, limited operations of our retail shop. Um, we are gonna continue to have limited operations. However, we're changing those hours to be times when we might be more accessible um, for you to come in and visit us. Um, so some of those, some of those um, changes that are coming up, um, we are gonna be open on the first and third Saturday of every month, starting next month in November. Um, so November 7th and 21st, we are going to be open from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Um, we hope that you come and visit us. We're so excited to see you guys. Um, also, starting the week of November 30th, we are going to be changing our hours to be open past 5 p.m. Wednesday through Friday. So that what that's going to look like, it is 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday through Friday, as well as the first and third Saturdays of the month from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, with that, we will be closed Sunday through Tuesday. Um, and so those changes will be happening again that week of November 30th. However, the Saturday hours are starting um, this month on November 7th. Um, our hope is that we are more accessible and more available um, to you, um, our troop leaders, to our girls. Um, and we hope that you guys will come down and visit us. And we're still offering uh, free shipping for people who can't get into the store, correct? Correct. Yep. We're still offering um, free shipping and um, this these changes to our brick and mortar shop don't affect any of our other operations. So customer care will still be available at the, the same times um, and things like that.
All right, our last operational update for you guys is um, we are going to be launching a new membership system. Um, and so this is something that is going to really improve the um, user experience. So as far as for registering um, uh, your membership, for renewing your membership, um, and even just kind of selecting what you want to do with Girl Scouts, this is going to be updated and changed. Um, and so with that, um, we're super excited as far as it's going to be just a cleaner, sleeker interface, more user friendly um, and something that I think you guys are going to all be really excited about. Um, and as we get ready for that new system and configure it and get everything all set up, we are going to have a downtime. And so that downtime is going to be from November 18th to September or excuse me, December um, third through seventh, we're not sure how long it'll take, um, not past December 7th, but somewhere between the third and the seventh. And so we want you to know um, what to expect during that time. Some things will be unavailable, for example, volunteer toolkit, looker, GS Learn, and online membership registration and renewal. All of that will be inaccessible from November 18th through December um, 3rd or 7th. And so please do um, take this into account as far as for with you, what you are planning for your Girl Scout year, for example, um, with volunteer toolkit being down during that time, you may want to download your troop roster um, before November 18th so you can still contact all of your troop. Um, you may want to download any meeting plans or other things that you have, may have stored in VTK if you're going to need them during that time. Um, GS Learn, if you're thinking about taking some of those virtual training classes, for example, um, you'll want to complete that before November 18th. Um, so just, and also, I guess I want to speak to too, as far as for um, your troop, if you're thinking about making any changes to your troop, for example, adding um, new girls to your troop or having girls renew, um, also do have that done before November 18th, because otherwise those online systems will be down for that, um, for that period of time. We will still be able to do it through paper, but um, it's much easier and quicker if we're able to do it online. Um, customer care, we're still gonna be up and running. Um, so no changes there as far as, um, as it relates to that or any of our other operations. However, we won't have access to our um, membership system. So we just won't have access to all of our information. So you may not be able to get as quick of a response or as detailed of a response from us um, during that downtime. So again, encouraging you to um, try and do anything that may need to be done before November 18th, before that downtime, just so we can best serve you during that time as well. And then I think due to time, I'm gonna go ahead and skip the forms just so that we don't keep everybody late and we'll take this up on our next one that we have. So let me get right, over to the next. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, um, Jess, thank you so much for um, all of that on the volunteer system. Um, just be patient because we might have to ask you for your name and number and email and all that stuff because we won't have access to it. So um, really take the time for you to print out your rosters, your um, anything that you're doing just in case um, that information doesn't come back to us. So print out anything that you can just so you have it for your own um, records. And so try, to this, pass this, sorry. try to pass that information on to other leaders as well, just because they may not be here or they may not hear it from the service unit um, team well, when they get together for their meetings. So try to pass the information on if you would. Thank you. This is one of my um, favorite parts of the whole session is the shout out, because we can't do this without all of our volunteers. So our first one is Stephanie, and I'm probably going to mess up her name. Coho. She um, opened up her house uh, backyard and we had a STEM event there and Michelle Taylor, the service unit manager in that area, really helped us out. And the, she had the um, washing station for the girls as far as washing their hands. We were masked up. We had all of the safety features. And she also has an incredible garden, took the girls on a tour of how to plant. So it was really, really an enjoyable time. Our next one is Emily Jensen. Emily is a service unit manager out in CUNA. She's also um, an essential worker. She's been working a lot of hours. Um, she's in the medical field. And so we really, truly appreciate all of you that have been just dealing with the COVID in that way and just really serving your volunteers still and getting everything together. 
Christina Sherman, really shout out to you, Christina. Christina put a lot of work into going through our COVID um, guidelines and they planned a painting party and she was able to have everything included in the waivers, the safety checks. She was back and forth with us as far as customer care and really, um, really letting us know what was working and, and what we might need to change as far as um, getting back to our volunteers to really explain the COVID um, guidelines. So I encourage each of you to check the um, guidelines as we get through the stages and as we're going forward and back. And kudos to all of you who are really um, dealing with all that you're dealing with and keeping your girls together. And we are here for you. So just reach out to us and um, know that we've all got it together and we're all in it together. Congratulations, ladies. We really appreciate you. One thing I did want to know is if you do have anybody that you think deserves a woo-woo, we'd love to share it during this time. So either put it in the comments or email customer care and we'll be happy to do that. Yeah, and I'd also like to add that um, if you can send it to us by the 15th of the month, um, if you hear of things happening out in the community that your volunteers are doing or your girls and their leader or their parent, uh, send that to us through customer care and that way um, we can shout them out. Okay, um, the cookie season is uh, upcoming. I, I just wanted to run through a few of the program dates and just to remind you to watch your emails and um, communications on our website. So um, the cookie start date is January 15th and the booth sales will be starting on February 27th. Um, the virtual training will be held on Tuesday, December 1st through Thursday, December 3rd at 6 p.m. So um, we will be sending out registration emails um, so that you can plan accordingly. Next and slide. And you guys may have seen communication as well that they, Alicia is doing a volunteer cookie committee. Um, so if you guys are interested in doing that, um, there is additional information here where they're gonna have everybody meet. And then we, uh, and we're gonna drop um, in the chat how you can get to that. And then also if you guys want to host a cookie rally, um, we're gonna drop a link as well, how you can do that. And it's gonna be interesting this year how all that comes about because I know we've had some really good ones in the past. So I'm anxious to see everything that everybody comes up with. But if you guys have any questions at all, you can always contact Alicia and I put her email address here on the screen. Um, and she's more than willing to help you with anything. Thank you. Okay, so we have some reminders. Um, I know we're running out of time, so bear with me. Um, Julia Lopes birthday is uh, this Saturday and also our fun run. So all of that information's on our um, website. Uh, the retail store hours, we talked about that, 10 to 2, November 7th and 21st. Girl delivery of the fall product is November 8th through the 14th. And all of our offices will be closed for the holiday for Thanksgiving, November 26th through the 29th. And then starting um, the week of November 30th, we uh, have listed out the hours for our retail store. And then um, don't forget about the in-person troop activity, uh, COVID safety guidelines and updates. So um, just refer to our um, website to get all of that. And we also have um, in the in next month recruitment events. So um, be sure to check out our events page. And also um, we encourage you to reach out with your service units to their troop organizers and your recruiters to let us know that you wanna partner with us to do uh, recruitment events in your area. There's a lot of things we can do that we can do virtually or in person. And then there's the Girl Scout Hangout and G Team TV for the girls. And um, that's something that is new. And so it's uh, gonna be really cool to check out. And Fotina, as far as your question, they are hoping that that is gonna be okay for the cookie rally at that time, but that subject has changed depending upon what happens with the COVID guidelines. So more to come on that. And then um, Troop Support usually has a monthly, this monthly Q&A on the uh, fourth Wednesday of the month. And we've decided to combine um, November and December. So the next one will be on December 9th. 
And we are so thankful that you're all here and um, giving up your evening. We really want to thank um, Jess and JJB and Betsy. Thank you so much for all the work and research that you did and everything that you um, put into this and Rochelle for everything you've done behind the scenes. We really appreciate everything you've done. Um, if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat. And also anytime you need to get in touch with us, you can do it at customer care at girlscouts-ssc.org. We'd love to hear from you. Please let us know what we can do to help you out. And so if you have any questions at this time for JJB, uh, Betsy, or Jess, um, go ahead and put them in the comment section and we'll bring all of them on. And then that way they can answer anything that they that you may have. While we're waiting for questions, y'all, this was so much fun. It's like a coffee chat, you know, hanging out with our with our sisters here. It's been a lot of fun. It is. And hearing my dog <laughs> whine at me because I'm not paying attention. <laughs> That's the highlight. That's the highlight of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> See, did you and hear? Rochelle. It kind of made me look around thinking that maybe that was my dog, even though I'm in the office. It's like, oh, Ella, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm like, I'm trying to mute and pet her at the same time to shush her. <laughs> She's funny because if she needs something, she comes to me, even though I'm not the master. My girls are supposed to be the master, but she comes to me to tell them that they need to do something. <laughs> She's figured out what's work. Is that yeah. what that yeah. is? <laughs> Mom's lost. <laughs> Too bad we didn't have any. Well, it doesn't cats. look like. I know. I do yeah, have I a question. <laughs> sure, yeah, maybe. So oh. I'm cutting everybody off. Sorry. JJB, did you have something you want? I was just going to ask if we thought we had any other questions coming in or if we did a good job given all of the big details. I don't see any questions coming in. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. We really do appreciate it. It's always fun seeing everybody come in. Patina, you're too nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for all you do. But we adore you. Both. And I'm so impressed, Fatina, that um, you're you're here with us tonight, even after the marathon that was um, National Convention this past weekend. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much for being with us here today. She's awesome. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Have a great evening. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, so. all.